Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about a new drama and of love. His name is Lenya and he is a medical student. In order to escape the freshman camp, he followed his friend Benny to the swimming pool. However, while Benny was swimming underwater, Lenya just sat aside and played with her mobile phone. Then, Yusef, a student from the School of Engineering, posted a message saying that he really wanted to go swimming. The comments below are all asking him to go swimming with Lenya. Afterwards, Yusef also came to the swimming pool and even said that he would attract the attention of the junior girl back from Lenya so as to get back the face of the engineering school. The friend at the side glanced at his figure and immediately wondered if he was a swimmer because he didn't have any muscles. Hearing this, Yusef directly kicked his friend out of the pool. When Yusef was playing with his friends in the swimming pool, Lenya kept watching him from the shore. The look in his eyes was very meaningful. After Yusef and Yusef left, Lenya's friend Daker picked up a gear necklace on the ground, which was from the engineering college. Lenya on the side took the necklace and said that he knew the senior in the engineering school, and he would just go back when the time comes. Seeing this, Daker teased Lenya, is that senior Yusef? After all, Lenya came here specifically to watch Yusef swim. Seeing this, it is almost certain that Lenya must have a crush on Yusef. Later, Lenya was surfing the internet when she saw Yusef posted a message saying that her gear was missing, and she hoped that someone would return it to him if she found it. Some of the comments below are gloating, and some are anxious for him. It seems that this gear necklace is quite important. The next day, Yusef was complaining to his friends. If the necklace cannot be returned, the seniors will be angry. Moreover, without gears, he is not in the mood to chat with female classmates. After all, there is a saying that whoever owns the gear owns his heart. Just then, Lenya appeared in front of Yusef. Later, Lenya took out the necklace and prepared to return it to Yusef. But before Yusef got it, Lenya made a request. Yusef said in the feed last night that the person who picked up the necklace can make a request. And Lenya's request is that he wants to pursue someone. But before he finished speaking, Yates, Yusef's friend, stood up on his own initiative. After all, she was the only girl in the audience, so no matter how you think about it, she must be chasing her. As a result, Lenya said that he wanted to pursue Yusef. Hearing this, Yates sat down silently again and let us feel sorry for her for three seconds. Yusef himself couldn't believe it, so he checked it out. Unexpectedly, Lenya said that he really liked Yusef. If Yusef doesn't agree with his quest, he doesn't return the gear necklace to Yusef. Although this method is a bit shameless, it works. Yusef had no choice but to agree to let Lenya pursue him. As a qualified suitor, Lenya went to the engineering school to find Yusef that day. For this reason, Yusef's friends quickly persuaded him to agree to Lenya. After that, Lenya followed Yusef to class directly, so that everyone's eyes were glued to the two of them. Don't you have classes in medical school? Yusef was inexplicably jealous when a lot of people pursued Lenya every day, and he was always angry when talking to Lenya. Afterwards, Yusef lay down on the table to rest for a while. Seeing this, Lenya immediately took out her mobile phone and took a picture of Yusef sleeping openly. After class, Lenya asked Yusef to send herself back to medical school. After delivery, Yusef left. Even if Lenya coquettishly asks him to stay, it won't work. Finally, Lenya took out her car keys and asked Yusef to drive his car back. Yusef refused and failed. He drove Lenya's car away. The next day, when Yusef was training the freshman, Lenya sat and waited for him at the back of the classroom and chatted with Yusef's friends for a while. It turned out that Lenya was the school girl of the medical school. No wonder so many people pursued him. When playing the game, Yusef came to Lenya's side, drank the mineral water Lenya had drunk and used Lenya's lipstick. Yusef put on the lipstick. Lenya put it on in front of him. It's an indirect kiss. After training the freshman, Yusef is ready to go to the bar with friends. Even though Lenya had a class the next morning, he still went along with it. But by coincidence, this bar is owned by Benny, and Lenya has been there several times before. Not long after they sat down, a girl came to strike up a conversation with Lenya and sat directly on Lenya's lap. Fortunately, Daker came in time and drove the girl away with the excuse that Lenya already had a boyfriend. Daker and Benny sat down. The sofa instantly became crowded. 
So Dacre offered to sit on Lenya's lap, but Benny stopped him. After all, Lenya now has someone to pursue, and she can't sit on her thighs casually. Seeing the close relationship between Lenya and Dacre, Yusef felt a little uncomfortable and wanted to sit somewhere else, so he excused that it was too crowded, and Lenya just let Yusef sit on his lap. Yusef said that he was not happy, but there was no struggle in his movements, and he was hugged by Lenya obediently, embracing the sweetheart. Lenya's love words come out of her mouth. He bluntly said that he not only wants you to sit on my lap, but also wants you to live in my heart. The next morning, Yusef woke up to find himself sleeping in Lenya's bed. Fortunately, he was still wearing his clothes, so nothing seemed to happen. On the bedside table were the car keys and a note left by Lenya, which said that he had made porridge for him and told him a lot of things. Even someone as arrogant as Yusef thinks Lenya is very gentle. Then Yusef remembered that last night, Dacre said that Lenya already had a relationship, so he put down the car keys and asked Lenya to sit with his wife. Why is this kid so stupid? Obviously, isn't Lenya's wife you? After arriving at school, friends joked that Yusef's clothes are neatly ironed, which is not his style. Finally forced Yusef to admit that this is Lenya's school uniform. Then Lenya even called Yusef. The two of them really couldn't bear to part for a moment. In the afternoon, Yusef sat and studied alone, and Lenya was rarely by his side. As a result, my friend saw the news posted by Lenya and didn't want to participate in the training camp, but wanted to be with the gear owner. There are a lot of comments below, all supporting the two of them being together. Seeing this, Yusef's friend directly took Yusef's mobile phone and commented, I got the gear, I have to bring my heart. Lenya replied to him immediately, it has been a long time. I have to say that Lenya really understands it too well. Hope others can learn from him. A few days later, Lenya bought a cake for Yusef. Because today is the one week anniversary of his pursuit of Yusef. The friends on the side were shocked. And they still have the heart to pursue the anniversary. Forget it. They still have their cake and eat it. As a result, the friend hadn't touched the cake yet. So Yusef took the cake back. And also excused that he was afraid that he would not be full. Friends said that it's okay to watch their sweet interactions every day, and they don't even have a bite of cake, so forget it, they should go to class. In this way, Yusef was left alone with Lenya. Lenya asks Yusef if you want to pursue him the other way around, so that Yusef will take the initiative to miss him. This regard, Yusef said he did not want to answer, and gave Lenya a bite of cake. Finally, Yusef went to swim team training. The person next to him asked Yusef if Benny was a friend of his boyfriend. Yusef naturally does not admit that Lenya is his boyfriend, but he does not deny that he likes Lenya. In the end, everyone found out that Lenya had sent a message saying she wanted to swim, but she didn't have a coach. After watching the dynamic, everyone was joking, and Yusef's ears were red. Just when Yusef was about to leave the pool, he met Lenya head-on. This time, Lenya didn't come empty-handed. She still bought a gift for Yusef. But after seeing Lenya and Dacre fighting, Yusef was obviously not happy. However, no matter what Lenya asked, he said he was fine. Dacre on the side reminded Lenya that Yusef must have misunderstood the two of them. Although Yusef denied it, Lenya still pulled him to a place with few people, ready to explain it to him. Sure enough, he still minded the intimacy between Lenya and Dacre, even if Lenya said that Dacre had someone he liked, Yusef didn't let it go. Also, Lenya's friends and supporters seemed to prefer Dacre to him. In the end, Lenya resorted to a trick, saying that he belonged to Yusef alone, and other people's opinions had nothing to do with him, and it was enough for him to like Yusef. After these words of love, Yusef finally felt relieved. Afterwards, Yusef even invited Lenya to have hot pot with their swimming team, along with Benny and Dacre. When it was dinner in the evening, Lenya asked Yusef what drink he wanted, and he went to get it for him. As a result, the matter was snatched by Dagny. Yusef seemed familiar with Dagny and joked with him. Seeing this, Lenya's vinegar jar was knocked over, and she got up and left. Friends on the side told Yusef that Dagny liked him, but Yusef didn't believe it at all was Yates' reminder that Yusef remembered to check on Lenya. As expected, Lenya is eating Dagny's vinegar, 
Lenya was still comforting the jealous Yusef, but at night it was reversed, and it became Yusef comforting Lenya, seeing that Lenya has been unhappy. Yusef had no choice but to tell Lenya that he already liked Lenya a little bit. Hearing this sentence, Lenya couldn't care less about being jealous, and she instantly became happy. After eating, Dagny and Lenya fought for the task of sending Yusef back to the room. In the end, Lenya hugged Yusef in front of Dagny, which was also an oath of sovereignty. In the end, Lenya sent Yusef back to the house. For Dagny, Lenya still minds, but Yusef said he was with Lenya every day. How could he like someone else? This sentence successfully made Lenya happy and directly asked Yusef to associate with him. However, Yusef said he needs some time to think about it. So, Lenya retreated and made Yusef only accept his pursuit alone. And the next time he asked for a relationship, Yusef had to agree. It's obviously unreasonable request, but Yusef agrees to all of them, and even promises to Lenya, it's not like, what is it? This pair can already be together directly. Then, Yusef opened the gift Lenya gave him during the day, which was a pair of swimming goggles. Yusef looked a little surprised. After Yusef put on the goggles, Lenya took the opportunity to take a selfie with his arms around him and sent a post along the way. When replying to a friend, Lenya accidentally made a joke. Yusef was not very happy at first, but seeing Lenya's silly look, he couldn't help but leaned forward and kissed Lenya. After all, this is what makes Lenya feel happy. That night, Lenya slept at Yusef's house. The next morning, Yusef woke Lenya up fiercely, but within a few words, he was softened by Lenya's coquetry. Later, Yusef had to use Dagny as a threat to get Lenya to wake up for breakfast. After dinner, Yusef drove Lenya to medical school. When they parted, the two looked inseparable, just like young couples in the period of passionate love. After Lenya finished class, I saw Yusef post a dynamic complaint about him finishing class too slowly, and he was starving to death. So, Lenya bought some snacks before going to Yusef. Seeing that Yusef's face was covered with sweat, Lenya leaned over to help him wipe the sweat, without caring about the feelings of the people around him. However, this is not the worst. The friends here just finished complaining, and Lenya started feeding Yusef again over there. Maybe the dumplings fed by her boyfriend are more delicious. Afterwards, Yusef went shopping with Lenya and saw Lenya hanging the sunglasses on the clothes, making the clothes into a big neckline. Yusef was very upset. In this regard, Lenya said that Yusef's pants are also very short, cute when they are jealous of each other. Even such a trivial matter is jealous. What will happen in the future? In the end, Lenya agreed to take off the sunglasses. But Yusef had to hold hands with him. However, this trivial matter was rejected by Yusef, and now Lenya was sad and left quickly after giving the sunglasses to Yusef. During the meal, Lenya couldn't cheer up, and she was still angry when she saw it. Seeing this, Yusef took his hand directly, took a photo, and posted it on the internet. The text said to hold hands if you want. Seeing this, Lenya finally became happy and praised Yusef for being cute. I have to say, this couple is really interesting. Sometimes they are arrogant, and sometimes they are unexpectedly frank. But does this mean that Yusef has publicly acknowledged Lenya's identity? Today, Lenya and Yusef are reading books in the bookstore. Dagny came with his friend, seeing his rival. Lenya's expression changed instantly. But Yusef, as a senior, still had a few words with Dagny. However, after a few words, Dagny began to confess to Yusef, which successfully angered Lenya on the opposite side. So Lenya threw the book away and asked Dagny if he couldn't see that he was chasing Yusef. Dagny was also very unconvinced and replied directly, Can't you see that I am also chasing him? Wow, it's a direct competition from the beginning. It is really exciting. In the end, Yusef couldn't stand it anymore and came out to stop the quarrel between the two. In this regard, Dagny feels very wronged. They are all suitors. Why Yusef has always favored Lenya, Dagny's friend on the side also helped to fan the flames, saying that there are so many people chasing Lenya, why Lenya has been pestering Yusef all the time. Lenya by saying this? Sure enough, Lenya immediately made a solemn statement after hearing it. 
saying that no matter how many people chase him, he only likes Yusef. In contrast, Dagny seemed a bit lacking in confidence, but he was still unconvinced, thinking that there was no difference if everyone was a suitor. In the end, Yusef could only speak his truth. He said to Dagny, the difference is that he likes Lenya and doesn't like Dagny. Such a direct refusal made Dagny stay where he was. Finally, Dagny's friends found an excuse and took him away. It seems that this young man's ability to adapt to changes is not bad. Let me tell you secretly, Dagny is also one of the three pairs of CPs, but his story is a bit sad. Let's look forward to it first. After the long theme song, the gossip woman appeared again. She posted an update on Lenya and Yusef online. The comments below are all. Want to know the situation? Then Lenya herself appeared and made a high-profile confession in the comment area, which made Yusef shy. Soon it will be the annual school star moon selection competition. To put it bluntly, it is to choose the most popular person, it's just that. In addition to looking at looks, this selection also has to consider ability and character. As the most popular person in the medical school, Lenya naturally also participated in this selection. Sure enough, as soon as Lenya came on stage, there were screams from below, which showed that his popularity was really high. In the auditorium, Yusef's friends tried various tricks to persuade Yusef to agree to Lenya's pursuit. It's a pity that Yusef is unmoved, but whether he is really unmoved or deliberately arrogant in front of his friends, let us continue to read. Finally, Yusef couldn't stand the chatter from his friends, so he went backstage to find his friend William. Coincidentally, Lenya was also backstage. However, Yusef went straight to William and the others without even looking at Lenya. While Yusef was talking to his junior, his cell phone kept ringing, were sent by Lenya behind her. Lenya felt aggrieved by Yusef's ignorance of him, and specially sent a message to ask for concern. But when Yusef turned to face him, Lenya deliberately asked him why he came to the medical school. Later, Lenya said that she was very humble. I'm just one of your suitors. You can do whatever you want and so on. After this operation, Yusef really fell for it. Originally planning to leave, he turned around and approached Lenya and took the initiative to kiss Lenya. Lenya who was kissed was even more overjoyed. Soon came the question and answer session of the contestants. Lenya is what would be the first thing he would do if he was elected school month. Lenya's answer was that he would thank everyone who supported him, but the first thing he would do was ask someone to hook up with him. The remark sparked a silence on the pitch. As Lenya went on to say that he had already asked once but was turned down, so this time, he wanted to confess his love to Yusef after he was elected to the school. No matter how many people like him, he will only like Yusef. The senior sister took the opportunity to make troubles and asked Lenya to choose between being elected to the school month and dating Yusef. Without even thinking about it, Lenya chose to date Yusef. After all, this is his lifelong pursuit. This speech managed to win the hearts of Yusef's friends and make them envious. However, in the end, Lenya was not elected as the Colonel S. Month, probably because his previous speech made his fans feel sad. Fortunately, he still has a top popularity award. In this regard, Lenya is still a little frustrated. When he delivered his acceptance speech afterwards, he mustered up the courage to express his love for Yusef over the past six years. Lenya fell in love with Yusef in the first grade of junior high school. For Yusef, he made a lot of changes and worked hard to make himself better. He didn't dare to formally contact Yusef until he participated in enough social activities and knew Yusef well enough. After picking up the gear, he decided to pursue Yusef. Lenya said that he wanted to confess to Yusef six years ago, but he has endured until now. If this pursuit is rejected again, he will definitely not be able to bear it. At the end, he confessed his love to Yusef again with a hint of crying. Hearing this, Yusef stood up angrily that he can't accept Lenya's confession, but Lenya has to beg him hard. Yusef took the initiative to hold hands and kiss for the first time, so let him take the initiative if you can't confess. Understanding what Yusef meant, Lenya immediately became happy. In front of everyone, he asked Yusef to date him again, and this time, Yusef agreed. Immediately afterwards, Yusef came onto the stage and hugged Lenya tightly. This hug inexplicably reminded the seniors of the dating show If You Are The One, and I always felt that there would be a narrator saying, 
Congratulations to them for successfully holding hands. After being together, Lenya wanted to stay by Yusef's side all the time. He kept staring at Yusef and asked Yusef's permission even for a kiss. Or Yusef is more straightforward. Kiss as soon as you say. Although it is just a superficial kiss, but it is enough to make Lenya happy. Interacted sweetly for a while until Yusef couldn't bear Lenya's affectionate gaze and got up to take a shower. After Yusef took a shower, he saw Lenya smirking at the phone and said that the phone contained someone he had liked for a long time. Yusef took the phone and looked. It turned out that it was Lenya who sent a post, which said, I will always look at you with that look. I hope you get used to it soon. After reading it, Yusef remained calm on the surface and urged Lenya to take a shower. In fact, after Lenya left, he shyly collapsed on the bed. After Lenya came out of the shower, it became Yusef looking at the person he liked on the phone. In fact, the young lovers took the opportunity to confess to each other. Lenya used to be very cold, but in order to pursue Yusef, he changed himself. Unexpectedly, Yusef was not happy. He wanted Lenya to smile only at him and not be nice to everyone like she is now. In this regard, Lenya said that he couldn't even smile at others because he only had Yusef in his eyes. After speaking, he leaned forward and kissed her. Hey guys, Lenya finally took the initiative for once. The next morning, Yusef woke up and just watched Lenya silently. After Lenya woke up, Yusef couldn't even get up and cook. So he was held in Lenya's arms and talked. The two were talking, and they had to do something. But just as the two were about to kiss, Benny suddenly rushed into the room. Originally, Benny specially came to call Lenya to celebrate. However, Lenya is too busy with Yusef to have a drink to celebrate. So he directly rejected Benny's invitation. Seeing this, Benny couldn't help revealing Lenya's whole card. Lenya hadn't chased Yusef back then. She followed him every day who was the same swimmer, and never let go of a chance to meet Yusef. Just seeing Yusef for a few moments can motivate Lenya to read a whole day. Now Lenya chased his wife and was about to abandon him. Hearing this, Yusef was surprised. Unexpectedly, Lenya liked him so much. In this way, Benny complained unintentionally, which successfully made the relationship between the two go further. <laughs> While eating breakfast, Yusef kept looking at Lenya, but unfortunately Lenya was too busy fighting with the food to notice the opposite gaze. Later, Yusef couldn't help but said that he wanted to eat fried rice noodles, but he didn't know how to use chopsticks. To put it bluntly, he just wanted Lenya to feed him. So Lenya took a mouthful of pho and fed it to Yusef. After chatting for a few words, Yusef took a piece of shrimp with chopsticks and fed it to Lenya. What's the situation? It's agreed that you can't use chopsticks? The exam week is coming soon. After finishing the last class, Lenya is going to find Yusef as soon as possible. After all, they haven't seen each other for seven days. But Yusef came to Lenya first, knowing that Lenya hadn't slept for two or three days in order to prepare for the exam. And the first thing after the exam was to go to him instead of catch up on sleep. Yusef was obviously unhappy. He urged Lenya to go to bed quickly, and Lenya took the opportunity to act like a baby and went to sleep at Yusef's house. Just like that, Yusef brought Lenya home and cooked him a meal by the way. During the meal, Yusef said that next week he will start his internship. Lenya was naturally very upset. He didn't want Yusef to be away for too long. Fortunately, there is still a period of time for the internship, but during this period, Yusef will go to the seaside to participate in an event with his juniors. Hearing this, Lenya is ready to take Benny and follow them to the beach secretly. A blind guess. This is to pave the way for the next CP. Seeing Lenya's heart full of herself, Yusef felt that it was not good. They are lovers, but they also have their own lives and tasks for each other. He didn't want to see Lenya disregarding her studies for her own sake. The two talked for a long time. And the final result of the negotiation was that Lenya had to take care of herself first before going to Yusef, and occasionally had to give Yusef the opportunity to take the initiative.
At night, looking at the sleeping Lenya, Yusef felt a little distressed. He wants Lenya to move in and live with him. Although Lenya couldn't hear him, he still said to Lenya, I love you. However, after Yusef was about to go to bed, Lenya replied, I love you too. Is this the legendary fake sleep? Lenya then started kissing Yusef proactively. Yusef said that he had to ask his permission, but when Lenya kissed him, he didn't object. Next, the two of them did something naturally. On the second day, before the two of them woke up, there was a knock on the door. So Lenya went to open the door with her upper body naked. Unexpectedly, Yusef even got jealous from his own friend. He thought Lenya shouldn't open the door topless. While the two were talking, the friends suddenly rushed into the house, seeing that both of them were topless. While everyone was surprised, there was also a hint of curiosity. After everyone closed the door, Yusef and Lenya were jealous of each other on the bed. It turned out that Yuda, a friend of Yusef, came from Bangkok to stay for a few days, and everyone wanted to get together. Today I came to ask him to go out for a drink, but it's a pity that Yusef won't be able to go. In this regard, Yusef is very unconvinced. He hasn't been to the bar for a long time, and it's good to have fun. However, this request was ruthlessly rejected by Lenya, sitting around a circle of people who know the truth. Only Yuda doesn't know anything about Yusef's love affair. He clamored for Yusef to tell him everything. This time, Yusef only talked about meeting Lenya for the first time. He was injured once in the third year of junior high school, and it was Lenya who bandaged him. At that time, Yuda was also there, but Lenya had changed so much that Yuda didn't recognize it. But just explaining this is not enough. Yuda wants to know everything about Lenya and Yusef, but was rejected by Lenya on the grounds that it's not a boyfriend. There's no need to know. This made Yuda have a bad impression of Lenya. Even with a group of people sitting around, Lenya and Yusef still interact sweetly without any scruples. I really want to say something. Feel sorry for the friends next to me. Sure enough, it would be better for them to go to the bar to drink. After talking about these things, everyone finally started to talk about business. William said that next month he will take his juniors to Koh Samet, and he will inform about it at the meeting tomorrow. But as soon as the business was over, Yusef couldn't wait to chase him away. After everyone left, Lenya showed her happiness. Today, Yusef admitted their relationship in front of friends which really surprised Lenya. At the same time, Lenya also made a promise that he will always love Yusef and only love him. The story of Yusef and Lenya is temporarily over, and it will be the turn of Dagny's CP story next. It's just that compared to the sweet interaction between the two, Dagny's side is obviously much sadder because he fell in love with a bad man William. The story starts from the day in the library. After being rejected by Yusef, Dagny went to the bar to get drunk. As a result, he was so drunk that he mistook William for Yusef. In this way, Dagny confessed affectionately to William and tried to throw William directly. However, the final result was that he was turned into a guest by William. Not only was he kissed by William, but he was also thrown on the bed by William. Dagny woke up the next morning with injuries all over his body. He found that his voice was hoarse. William on the side wanted to see if he had a fever but Dagny refused. Then, William showed his bad man nature and told Dagny not to tell this matter, otherwise his girlfriend would know. That's right, William has a girlfriend whom he has been dating for several years. Do you think he is bad? Hey, there are worse things in the future. After that, Dagny saw Yusef and Lenya getting closer and closer on social software, and he had long been shut out. Thinking about it makes Dagny miserable but he can only play guitar on the balcony melancholy by himself. Coincidentally, next door is the bedroom of William's girlfriend Midori. At this time, William and Midori were watering flowers on the balcony, and they were very close. After Dagny said hello, he quarreled with William. Seeing that he couldn't talk to William, Dagny wished the two of them a long time and ended the chat. The school month competition, Dagny sent William a few messages. Yusef is with Lenya and he's totally lost. Seeing the news, William was a little worried about Dagny, so he lied to his friend that he would go back to find Midori and let Yates and the others go first. In fact, Midori went drinking with friends today, and she called William specifically to tell William that she would not be coming home tonight. Just after talking on the phone with his girlfriend here, 
William went to Dagny to send materials over there. He also gave a few questions to Dagny's friends. Everyone else was asking serious questions. Only Dagny was absent-minded. For this, he was reprimanded by William. William found out that Dagny was wrong, and his friend explained that he had recently broken up in love, which made Dagny completely distraught. Dagny like this, there was a hint of distress in William's eyes. Then, William offered to borrow Dagny for a day. <laughs> Seeing this, the two friends ran faster than a rabbit and slipped away, leaving only Dagny and William staring at each other. In this way, Dagny was taken to dinner by William. In fact, William also felt very guilty about forcing Dagny that day, so he wanted to do something to compensate Dagny, but Dagny says he doesn't mind anymore, including Yusef, who has now let it go. One day, William took Dagny to meet his friends, and it happened that Lenya sent a message. Everyone is discussing this news, and William naturally wants to take a look, but as soon as he took out his mobile phone, he received a text message from Midori, and he replied a few words by the way. Dagny at the side saw William and Midori's affectionate chat, suddenly a little unhappy, and left alone. Seeing Dagny leave, William's friend Derry immediately got up to see him off. After Derry left, William asked, When did Derry and Dagny become so familiar? Another friend explained that because Dagny is a student of Yates, and Yates and Derry are in the same department, Dagny is a direct student of Derry. Although the explanation was clear, William felt that Derry was more than just a junior to Dagny. After class, everyone was heading to the cafeteria. On the way, William saw Derry posting a post asking Dagny to study hard. During the meal, Derry took out the snacks bought by Dagny, saying that he can eat this instead of eating. Dagny also bought the same snacks for Yates, but not for William. The friends next to him joked about the relationship between Derry and Dagny. William on the side was not happy no matter what he heard and even Derry himself looked like he was bound to win Dagny. Finally, William couldn't take it anymore and left without eating. However, within a few steps, William ran into Dagny. William was very concerned about Dagny buying snacks for others, but on the surface he pretended to be upset and asked Dagny all kinds of things, which scared Dagny away. After returning to the dormitory, William still couldn't hold back and called Dagny directly, knowing that Dagny was in the dormitory. He simply came to find Dagny directly, since he was next door anyway. As soon as he entered the door, William asked Dagny why he ignored him. From the morning of talking about Lenya and Yusef, something was wrong with him. Therefore, William felt that Dagny must not have let go of Yusef. After Dagny repeatedly explained that he had completely let go of Yusef, William felt that Dagny must have fallen in love with someone else, otherwise it would be impossible to let go so quickly. He guessed that person was Derry. Just when the two were tense, Midori called William and said that she would not be coming home tonight. William was not angry at all, and even flirted with Midori in front of Dagny. However, as soon as he hung up the phone, William dragged Dagny to see Yusef again, and he wanted to see that Dagny didn't like Yusef. Dagny naturally didn't agree to go with him, but seeing that William's softened attitude was only a little gentle, he agreed in a strange way. After arriving at the place, Yusef and the two of them looked at each other in dismay, and after making sure that they were all right looking for him, Yusef and Lenya had dinner together, seeing the two people getting along warmly. Dagny is actually a little envious, he just wants a love that likes each other. Seeing the exam week, William complained that he hadn't reviewed yet, and Dagny at the side satirized him why he didn't prepare in advance. Unexpectedly, William replied that his time was eaten by the puppy. Apparently, the puppy is Dagny, but when asked if he would stay with the puppy all the time, William replied that it depends on his mood. Hearing this answer, Dagny felt a little sad, so he said that he had class tomorrow morning and went back first. However, William had already memorized Dagny's class schedule and immediately exposed his lie. Dagny had no choice but to say that he and his friend made an appointment to do homework together tomorrow morning. Seeing this, William got up immediately. Dagny thought William was going to take him home, but William said he was just going to the bathroom. When Dagny walked to the corner of the teaching building, he saw William was on the phone with Midori, and the two were in love. Afterwards, Dagny's friend took him to the bar, but Dagny saw that Midori was very intimate with another man. 
as expected of a couple who have been together for a long time. Even cheating is so tacit. This made Dagny's friends want to find out the news, but was stopped by Dagny. Friends praised William for being handsome and dedicated, and he was rejected by many people who chased him. Except for his girlfriend, William has never been ambiguous with others, and he is a good man worth cherishing. Hearing this, Dagny felt very uncomfortable and silently changed the subject. After returning home, Dagny's friends posted photos of them drinking on social software and tweeted Dagny. Unexpectedly, this news was seen by William, and he called Dagny directly to ask if he was with someone else. Dagny was bored. He never wanted to get involved in William's life, but William still pestered him. William said directly that it was his wife who was calling him now. Dagny on the other side was obviously frightened and hung up the phone quickly. The next morning, Midori kisses William good morning. After waking up, William tentatively asked Midori why she always went to sleep at a friend's house recently. In this regard, Midori coquettishly said that she will never do it again next time. Therefore, William did not pursue this matter any further. He still confessed to Midori as usual, but the steps he got out of bed were a bit heavy. It turned up at last night. William received a message from Derry, which contained intimate photos of Midori and other men. In other words, William knew about Midori's affair last night. William came out of Midori's dormitory. Dagny just went out, ready to go to class. At this time, William desperately needed someone to comfort him, so he begged Dagny to accompany him for a while. Coincidentally, Dagny also wanted to have a formal talk with William. After entering the door, William leaned directly on Dagny's shoulder. His whole body was extremely fragile. William like this. Dagny also softened his heart. So, he let William hold his hand, and even kissed William himself. He hoped that when William was with him, he would not think of Midori. That happened after that happened naturally. Afterwards, Dagny posted a post, and the comments were all his friends complaining about him. Not going to class, but posting here. Derry is especially active in the comments section. William woke up and saw Dagny and Derry interacting just in time. So, someone's jealous jar was overturned, and he specially emphasized to keep Dagny and Derry at a distance. After taking a shower, William is ready to review with Dagny. However, his book is in Midori's dormitory. Mentioning Midori, the faces of both of them were not very good looking. Dagny was worried that William would not come back after going there. Seeing this, William promised that he would come back after finishing the book. At noon, William saw a gossip-loving woman on the internet and uploaded a video, which showed Midori flirting with other boys. In this regard, the gossip woman hopes that William will come out and explain, so that his fans can feel at ease. But just after watching the video, Midori's phone call came. Apparently, Midori saw that video too and couldn't wait to explain it to William. But at the moment Midori is still in that man's house. So, the two made an appointment to meet in the dormitory. After the call, William asked Dagny to wait for him for a while. Dagny thought that William was going to make it clear to Midori, so he told him to go and come back quickly. When William arrived at the dormitory, Midori had been crying for quite a while, and the first thing William did when he saw Midori was to gently wipe her tears and tell her not to cry. When Midori asked William if she still loved her, William admitted it. Seeing this, I really can't understand. It's all like this. Why do you still love her? In the end, it turned out to be Midori's proposal to break up. In fact, it can't be called a breakup. She just asked the two to separate and calm down. William also agreed. William, did you forget that there is someone waiting for you to go back next door? Midori doesn't mention breaking up. Are you still ready to reconcile? <laughs> Black. A few days later, everyone comforted William in the bar. At the same time, the gossiping woman updated Midori that she was officially with the man. Looking at the silent William, everyone tried to comfort him. Yates also called a few of his juniors. After all, the more people there are, the more lively it is. Soon, Dagny and the others arrived at the bar. Seeing Dagny, Derry couldn't help but joked about giving Dagny his pure love. Hearing this sentence, William put the cup heavily on the table in annoyance. Everyone thought he had just broken up in love and couldn't listen to other people's love, so they accused Derry one after another. Unexpectedly, Derry hugged Dagny directly, wanting to use his shoulder to hide. 
William was even more upset. After realizing something was wrong, Dagny made an excuse to go to the bathroom. William then went to the bathroom as well. In the aisle, Dagny asked William why he didn't come back that day, and he waited for a long time. William couldn't believe this. He thought Dagny wouldn't wait for him. However, Dagny said he had planned to wait for William from the start. Finally, the two had dinner together. Dagny secretly photographed William, but was caught. William said that it would be better to let it be public than to secretly shoot it like this. However, now that William has not officially broken up with Midori, Dagny is still waiting for him to break up. As soon as he finished speaking, William called Midori and asked her to meet sometime. After hanging up the phone, seeing Dagny's puzzled eyes, William explained that he broke up with Midori, and now he doesn't love Midori, but Dagny. This sentence successfully made Dagny shy and gave him a mouthful of food himself. However, the gossip woman said in a new update that William and Midori got back together and asked others to leave quickly, and there are pictures to prove it. Reading this, Dagny fell silent. His friends were also puzzled. Everyone thought that Dagny and William were already together, but now it is said that William is back together. Faced with friends asking questions one after another, Dagny also felt aggrieved. He was still waiting for the news that William had broken up with his ex-girlfriend, but he heard rumors that they got back together. Friends began to enlighten Dagny, asking him to think about his relationship with William and not to wait too long for William's response. Dagny thought his friend was right, so he picked up his mobile phone to call William, but he saw that Midori seemed to be reunited with William, and there were remarks in the comments that made other people leave. At this moment, William took the initiative to call Dagny. He said that he broke up with Midori yesterday evening and just ran into Midori on the road. He took the initiative to say hello as a friend, but was misunderstood. However, Dagny doesn't quite understand why he can continue to be friends after breaking up, but he can't after failing to confess to Yusef. For Dagny's question, William found him awkward. In the end, William asked Dagny to go to the bar in person at night to see if he and Midori really broke up, and to announce their relationship by the way. Dagny agreed to William's request. When Dagny came to the bar, he said hello and went straight to William. However, what appeared in front of his eyes was the picture of William and Midori kissing. At this moment, Dagny's whole body froze. His friend also saw the scene, and was so angry that he stepped forward and punched William. When Dagny turned to leave, William hurriedly tried to chase him out, but his friend firmly stopped him from chasing Dagny. When they confronted each other, Yates, who was unknown, came to hold them back. After learning that William was kissing his ex-girlfriend, the situation became more complicated. Yates slapped William straight across the face. Midori on the side couldn't bear to watch and wanted to speak for William. Obviously, Midori didn't know that William had completely broken up with her, let alone that William was with Dagny. In other words, William, the bad man, deceived both of them. William is indeed an out-and-out -out bad man, since he deceived the innocent Dagny over and over again. This makes Dagny, who is looking forward to a beautiful love, how can he accept it? Can he, who has been injured one after another, really muster the courage to love? What should William do to save Dagny in their tortuous relationship? In a fit of anger, Dagny left the bar sadly. It wasn't until then that William became really anxious and hurried out to find Dagny. He never thought that one day Dagny would leave him, so when this happened, he really panicked. Later, William came to Dagny's apartment and frantically called him. However, no one answered the phone. Derry next to him advised William to go back first. Dagny might not be at home. But William didn't listen at all. Just then, Dagny and his friends came home from outside. When he finally met someone, William naturally had to explain it well. But at this moment Dagny was completely numb. He completely ignored William, let alone listen to his explanation. Finally, Dagny entered the house alone and just shut the door of William who was still talking. Seeing this, Derry persuaded William to go back with him. But William was unwilling. He's all bad now. Oh, it's not good to know at this time. When kissing Midori, why don't you think about the consequences? Just like that, William leaned against the wall, remembering the words he had said to Dagny, the promises he had made. He became, 
Hey, what's the use of being sad now? After returning to the room, William sent a status, begging Dagny to forgive him. The comments were all sympathetic friends, but not the one William was expecting. After posting the update, William called Dagny, but no one answered. The next moment, Dagny posted a post about his ex-boyfriend. In the comments, someone asked him why he didn't tell everyone when he met his ex-boyfriend, and someone chatted with Dagny about William, saying that William is very decadent now. Dagny said that he knew, so he deliberately made the news public. This makes everyone wonder whether Dagny will get back together with his ex-boyfriend. Seeing these comments, William really panicked. Dagny again, and this time the call finally went through, but it was a strange man who answered the phone. He said Dagny had gone to the bathroom and would be back soon, but after learning that it was William, Dagny hung up the phone mercilessly. After the phone was hung up, William was already in tears. Derry on the side asked him what happened. William said Dagny didn't want him anymore, but even so, his friends didn't sympathize with him. Instead, they asked him why he didn't say anything. Did he really treat everyone as friends? Just as they were berating William, Derry walked into the room and asked everyone if they had seen Dagny walking with a strange man who seemed very close. Hearing this, William ran out without saying a word. Derry had to follow him to prevent accidents. At this time, Dagny was sitting with a boy as expected. Based on the dynamics he posted, this should be Dagny's ex-boyfriend Nun. At this time, Nun had just received the pancakes from Dagny and was praising Dagny for her cuteness in a coquettish tone. When William arrived, what he saw was Nun and Dagny's intimacy. Seeing this, Derry took William over to greet Dagny and asked Dagny what happened recently. Everyone was worried about him. When introducing the two to Nun, Dagny said that William was a senior with whom he had a good relationship, and he was just a senior. Even so, Nun was a little jealous, seeing that William hadn't spoken for a long time. Derry asked him what he cared most about, that is, what happened to Dagny and Nun? Hearing the question, Dagny hesitated to answer it. On the other hand, Nun said openly that they had been together before. After that, Derry asked Dagny to chat with them at night. But Dagny wanted to go shopping with Nun. Finally, several people make an appointment. Let Dagny and Nun go to the bar to play together at night. In the evening, Dagny and Nun came to the bar as scheduled. William and the others had already started drinking. After saying hello, everyone started to gossip about the relationship between Nun and Dagny, such as how long they were together. Dagny answered everything. And William, who was listening, couldn't help curling his lips. Nun who was a little drunk, got up to go to the bathroom. Dagny wanted to accompany him, but Nun insisted. In the end, Dagny had to call a friend to watch Nun. Unexpectedly, the friend took Nun away directly. At this time, everyone else in the seat also said that they had to go back beforehand. Only William and Dagny were left looking at each other. In the end, William was the first to say that he missed Dagny and was going crazy. Originally, he had a lot of things to say. But when he saw Dagny, those words disappeared. Only missing. Next, William wanted to explain his relationship with Midori. But Dagny felt that there was no need to listen anymore. It could be said so. But Dagny didn't leave either. Obviously, he still left time for William to explain. So, William explained that he had broken up with Midori. What Dagny saw that day was the parting kiss that Midori demanded. Unexpectedly. Dagny became even more angry after hearing this, and his attitude became much colder. Next, William begged Dagny to give him another chance, but Dagny refused. Not everything deserves a second chance. William, who was broken and broken, asked Dagny, Don't you like him? Have no feelings for him yet? Pay attention to Dagny's expression at this time. He obviously likes it, but he still forces himself to deny it. Finally, Dagny got up to leave. At this time, William took his hand and made a trick. That is to say I love you three words. Sometimes, it works better than all the rhetoric. Sure enough, Dagny softened when he heard William's confession. At dinner the next day, my friends were outraged at Dagny's easy soft-heartedness. Thinking that he forgave too quickly, Dagny himself, however, doesn't care. While everyone was talking, Dagny's phone kept vibrating. When I opened it, it was indeed a message from William. At this time, 
William directly changed his attitude, begging Dagny to reply in various ways. Dagny, who was no longer angry, did not continue to hang out with William, so the two chatted like this. This period, Dagny couldn't hide the smile on his face. No matter how he looked at it, he looked like he was in love. Seeing this, the friend next to him couldn't bear it any longer and asked Dagny if he could get full just by staring at his phone even after eating. Under the gaze of his friends, Dagny put down his phone and started eating. However, before taking a few bites, the phone started vibrating again. In the end, Dagny didn't eat at all, took his mobile phone, and started chatting intently. After dinner, Dagny studied in bed with his friends. Then there was a knock on the door. No need to guess that it is William. Sure enough. After the friend opened the door, William was posing outside. However, the person who opened the door was not Dagny, which is a waste of looks. It turned out that William came to invite Dagny to watch the ball game. However, Dagny is still working on the report, which is estimated to take a full day. Hearing this answer, William was instantly lost. He wanted Dagny to go to the ball game, but William didn't give up. He came to Dagny and just watched Dagny study. After a while, Everyone was tired from writing and started chatting and resting. William took the opportunity to put his hand on Dagny's shoulder, watching his homework. No matter how others ridicule, he will not let go. But Dagny asked William to back off, and he obediently did. What a bad man, just like that, turned into an obedient and good baby. Teasing Dagny, William told everyone that this assignment can be done together. Such important information is only being revealed now causing everyone to write it for so long. In the end, Dagny decided to hand in homework together on Monday. William on the side saw that Dagny was so tired doing homework, so he hurried up to give him a shoulder squeeze. Seeing this, the friends on the side complained about them one after another, regardless of their feelings. But I didn't expect that the more extreme is still to come. William said that the boyfriend of the engineering school is no worse than the medical student. After speaking, he also asked for Dagny's opinion. Dagny lowered his head and said not bad shyly. This answer showed that he had completely forgiven William. As a swimmer, Dagny also needs to train. But William doesn't want Dagny to wear only a few clothes. He can't wait for Dagny to swim in his coat. This unreasonable request was naturally rejected by Dagny. But seeing William jealous, Dagny was obviously happy. Then, William deliberately made a fool of himself in front of his friends saying that if Dagny were his boyfriend, he would definitely not agree to Dagny wearing such a swimsuit. But now the other party is not his boyfriend, so he can only bear it. These remarks are still very useful. When Dagny left, he told William that he only wanted William S. true love. On the other hand, the gossip-loving woman also kept up with William S. relationship progress and recorded him saying in the video that William had been chasing Dagny for several months and even sent Dagny to the door of the classroom. But these videos, William never commented on, because Dagny didn't like him interacting with other people. Yusef said that Dagny may be insecure because William is not his boyfriend until now, and he has not disclosed their relationship. Several people were chatting, and Dagny came. The friend next to William hurriedly made room for Dagny, and must not disturb the young couple. And Yates are still discussing whether they should make it public. Dagny obviously cared about this, but pretended to be indifferent. Seeing this, William took the initiative to ask Dagny if Dagny would scold him if he made it public on the software. Looking at the way Dagny's mouth is raised, it's too late to be happy. After a while, two girls came to take a photo with William. After the photos were taken, they also asked about William's love life by the way. After all, Midori was already with other people and there was no movement on William's side. In this regard, William replied that he already has a relationship partner, but it has not been made public. The two girls were very excited after hearing it. They thought William and Midori were very sweet together, and hoped that William would also announce his new partner as soon as possible. There was nothing wrong with saying this, but Dagny got upset when Midori was mentioned, so, he deliberately gave William's mobile phone to the two girls asking them to take pictures for him. However, the mobile phone is a public post from Dagny, and the two girls saw the post as soon as they picked up the phone, so they were naturally curious about their relationship. William replied that Dagny was his boyfriend, 
This answer successfully made Dagny happy. Seeing that news, friends also ridiculed. The two of them were also worried about whether William would lose fans because of this. However, William didn't panic at all. Anyway, the news was posted by his boyfriend, and Dagny was enough for him. The others were so angry at his words that they all left the table angrily. However, Dagny didn't think it was enough. He pulled William specially and said to his friend, this is his boyfriend. After saying this, Dagny made himself shy. At night, William blindfolded Dagny. Ready to surprise him, Dagny opened his eyes. He found that the walls were full of projected stars. Forget it. This crew is relatively poor, so let's make do with it. Looking at the stars on the wall, Dagny couldn't help recalling every detail of his acquaintance with William, from the initial misrecognition to the later intimacy. They have experienced a lot together, but fortunately they are together in the end. After reminiscing, the two stared at each other and slowly kissed each other, although the process was very difficult. Fortunately, the two came together in the end. And next, we will tell the story of the third pair, which is also the last pair of CP in the whole show. It is said that Enoch is a playboy. I don't know what kind of sparks such two people will have. At a friend's gathering, Enoch and some friends were drinking and chatting, and accidentally saw the cute little Nick wearing a rainbow shirt. Seeing Nick's sweet and pleasant smile, Enoch's heart immediately became turbulent. He had already vowed secretly in his heart that he must take down this lovely man. Oh, no, it's about chasing the opponent. <laughs> During class the next day, Enoch didn't care to listen to the lecture at all, and was busy checking social profiles, waiting and waiting but couldn't wait for Nick to agree to his friend request. Waiting for Nick's news, the students at the side couldn't stand the nympho Enoch and mocked him one after another. Nick is still a high school student. How could Enoch have the heart to do it? But Enoch didn't care. Who made Nick smile sweetly? His soul was hooked by Nick. Enoch was worrying about how to get close to Nick, but unexpectedly Nick came over by himself. It turned out that Nick and his younger brother Fuck came to the medical school to find a senior sister to make up lessons, while they were waiting for their seniors in the restaurant. Enoch saw them by chance, hearing that Nick wanted to drink orange soda. Enoch kindly bought it for him and politely delivered the soda to Nick. At first, Nick was shocked by this, wondering who this person was and why he was being given soda. Enoch quickly explained that they met at the party the night before, but they were far away and had no chance to talk. Unexpectedly, Nick immediately thought of Enoch, and had a good impression of him, thinking that Enoch looked more handsome in school uniform. This made Enoch very happy. Knowing that Nick was going to class, Enoch decided to sit aside and wait for him to finish class. However, Nick couldn't concentrate during the whole class. After all, there was someone watching him and he couldn't stay calm if he wanted to concentrate. Fuck on the side can't stand it anymore. Aren't you wasting your family's tuition fees by doing this? Seeing the brothers arguing, Enoch reappeared just in time. He said that he can help them make up lessons for free. Fuck was quite happy at first, but after thinking about it, Enoch must have been upset. However, the brothers still couldn't stand the temptation of free, so they agreed. Knowing that the two of them were going to buy review materials, Enoch once again had the cheek to follow. Along the way, Fuck watched Enoch staring at Nick intently, and he knew exactly what Enoch was thinking. So, Fuck found an excuse and slipped away first, creating a chance for the two of them to be alone. Seeing that Fuck was gone, Enoch immediately tore off his senior's face and started a frenzy defensive against Nick. Nick became overwhelmed by Enoch's attack. Hearing Enoch praise himself for being cute made Nick even more overwhelmed. Seeing Enoch reading cooking books, Nick's affection for him doubled. Nick's eyes lit up when he heard that Enoch was still single. Immediately afterwards, Enoch expressed that he wanted to pursue Nick, which made Nick even more at a loss. Fortunately, Fuck's call came to save him at this time. Nick smiled awkwardly and politely, and left. In the evening, Enoch was very excited and directly shared his happiness in the circle of friends, saying that he had finally found his love goal. After some ridicule from his friends, Nick also saw his dynamic, so Enoch continued to tease Nick directly online. In the end, he even directly said something like Senior wants to pursue you, and Nick was so ashamed that he didn't dare to reply to him. 
The next day, even Lenya knew that Enoch was chasing his brother. This made Enoch very nervous, but he didn't expect Lenya to be an uneasy and kind person. On the one hand, he told Enoch that Nick likes to drink orange juice and eat bananas, and on the other hand, he told Enoch that Nick didn't like operations like Playboy. Then, Lenya directly stated that he would not stop Enoch from pursuing Nick, but if the two were really together, he would find a way to separate Enoch and Nick. Seeing Lenya's strange attitude, Enoch was very depressed. However, Enoch is not intimidated, and the title of Playboy is not for nothing. How could he give up so easily? Enoch sent countless messages, and Nick finally couldn't bear to reply to him. In fact, Nick was just feeling uncomfortable, so he didn't reply to him. I don't know if he was disgusted by Enoch, but Enoch immediately pretended to be wronged and asked Nick to coax him. At this moment, Enoch's friends beside him couldn't stand it any longer. Is it really okay for you to coax little brother like this? In the evening, when Enoch was having dinner with his classmates, he ran into Nick by chance. Enoch immediately asked him if he had eaten with concern, and he didn't forget to pat Nick's head tenderly. This move almost made Nick blush, so he pretended to be angry and walked away. Enoch followed up again and continued to use his shameless advantage. He knew that Nick had a crush on him, so he solemnly expressed that he would seriously pursue Nick. At the same time, he did not forget to continue to attack and stroke the opponent's head. On the social software, the students had a crazy discussion about Enoch's pursuit of Nick. This made Nick a little unacceptable. He was originally a very restrained child, and Enoch's behavior made Nick somewhat uncomfortable. He got home. Nick called Fuck. He wondered what Fuck thought of Enoch. Fuck directly stated that Enoch is a playboy. As for Nick's choice, Fuck's advice is to follow his heart, regardless of the outcome. Fuck is his strong backing. But Enoch has a little trouble here, because it was to get close to Nick. He deliberately said that he would help them with math tutoring, but it was very difficult for him to pass the math grades. He gave Nick extra lessons, isn't that self-defeating? So, Enoch thought of Dagny. He is a top student in mathematics, so if he can make up lessons for Nick, it will be fine. But Enoch overlooked one thing, no matter from which point of view, Dagny was also Enoch's favorite person. He asked his predecessor to make up lessons for the current one, thanks to which he figured it out. I really don't know what's going on in Enoch's head. Afterwards, Enoch meets Nick at a cafe. Nick also heard that Enoch wanted Dagny to help him with tutoring. Nick decisively refused because Nick didn't want Enoch and Dagny to talk. In fact, Nick has hinted at the obvious. Enoch didn't realize that Nick was just jealous until he returned to the dormitory and asked his classmates for help online. He didn't let Enoch and Mark talk. In other words, he didn't want to create opportunities for them. Nick is a complete jealous jar. Although Nick didn't want Enoch to communicate with Dagny, Dagny agreed to help Nick make up lessons for Nick's study. In order to join in the fun, Enoch took a lot of classmates to participate in Nick's study group. Even though it was a study group, Nick was staring at Enoch the whole time. This kind of elementary school brother who is full of eyes is yours. How wonderful. I really hope they can be together sooner, but Lenya seemed very unhappy. Seeing that Nick was fascinated by Enoch, he was very angry, and quickly reprimanded Nick for what to watch and study hard. In fact, it's no wonder that Lenya is so nervous. After all, Enoch's previous style was not very good. What if Nick is caught in a tiger's mouth again this time? What should he do? But Enoch was not worried when he learned that. Since he had stolen Nick's heart, he would take good care of it. After finishing speaking, he gently stroked Nick's head again. Hey, Nick looks like he's going to be taken down. The next day, after Dagny helped Nick and Fuck finish tutoring, suddenly a little brother in blue came over to say hello. He said that seeing Nick had been studying hard here for so long, he had a piece of cake that he just didn't want to eat, and hoped that Nick could taste it. Nick was innocent and didn't realize that the other party was trying to strike up a conversation. He just thought the cake tasted good and ate a few bites. In addition to the orange flavor, Nick also likes the matcha flavor. He also wanted to ask his brother where the cake came from. Just when the little brother asked for Nick's contact information, Thane came over suddenly. 
He snatched the younger brother's cell phone and said that he could tell him if there was anything he wanted, and he didn't need Nick's contact information. The little brother was also a little irritable, saying that he was chatting up with Fuck and it had nothing to do with Enoch. Thane was even angrier when he heard it, because this person came over to strike up a conversation even when he was mistaken. He told the little brother that the person in front of him was Nick, not Fuck. The little brother may be deliberately provocative to save face, saying that the two of you have nothing to do with each other. Nick had no choice but to give the other party his contact information so that the scene would not get out of control. After the little brother left, Enoch was very unhappy, but Nick received a message from his younger brother. He said that he did it on purpose just now, but seeing Enoch being jealous was very funny, so he deliberately teased him. It can be seen from Enoch's reaction how much Enoch cares about Nick. Nick wants to comfort Enoch, but he doesn't know where to start. Instead, Enoch dragged Nick away and returned to the dormitory. When he came to the room, Enoch finally let go of his face and confided his heart to Nick. He might have been a playboy, but no one could make him care so much. Get so jealous of him like Nick. Maybe he was too impulsive and nervous today, but he did it because he likes Nick. Maybe this makes Nick feel uncomfortable, but in fact this is the expression of love. For Enoch, now he just hopes that Nick can accept himself and that Nick can love him. Seeing that Nick still couldn't open his mouth shyly, Enoch was very anxious. He slowly grabbed Nick's hand with his right hand, and the other hand was already around Nick's waist. Is this the rhythm of taking coercive measures? Seeing Enoch's sincere eyes and touching confession, Nick finally let go, finally said that he likes Enoch very much. Seeing that Nick had already acquiesced, Enoch was rude and kissed Nick directly on the cheek. Originally Enoch thought that Nick would kiss him on the face. But unexpectedly he kissed Enoch hard on the neck, and said to Enoch, you will have a boyfriend in the future, so you can't hook up everywhere anymore. Enoch agreed, but at the same time, he taught Nick a lesson, let Nick not be so cute in the future, otherwise those people outside who are staring at him will definitely not be able to control him. Enoch seemed to see that Nick was a little nervous, so he comforted him, don't worry, Enoch won't do anything to Nick for the time being. But Enoch did not say that this is only temporary. When the time comes, how can Nick escape from Enoch's clutches? Enoch and Nick confirmed their relationship. They couldn't wait to take a selfie of themselves. In addition to showing your handsome face, the most important thing is to show the marks on your neck. This is the proof that Junior Nick has just stamped and signed for it. As soon as he sent out the photo, it attracted a lot of collective ridicule from his classmates. This makes people smell the sour smell of love through the screen. After chatting with friends online, Enoch also showed Nick the photos he had just posted. Nick was even more exaggerated. He directly turned on his phone and used a high-profile video to officially announce the relationship between the two. This is really going to take the sweetness to the extreme. But then he received all kinds of envy and jealousy from his friends. They all sent sympathy to Nick. Good junior. How could he be tricked by Enoch? A friend was even more mischievous and asked directly, Is it appropriate for Nick to sleep with Enoch when he is only 18 years old? Enoch argued that Nick will be 19 in three days, so he can sleep anywhere. So what is there to worry about? He also asked the other party to tell Lenya to rest assured that he would take good care of Nick, seeing that one of these two people is willing to fight and the other is willing to suffer, and they really love each other. What else can others say? To celebrate Enoch and Nick's happy marriage, Enoch called on his friends to prepare a party. At the moment Nick entered the door, Enoch brought out a small cake with a card printed on them. Witnessed by everyone, the two finally came together. Nick looked at Enoch walking towards him, his eyes filled with happiness. Then, everyone drank and celebrated together. A friend suddenly came up with a guitar. The beautiful melody began, and Enoch and Nick fell into good memories. In retrospect, Enoch also met Nick at a party. Along the way, Nick's voice and smile have all influenced Enoch, turning him from a former playboy into a serious and responsible good man today. It seems that the power of love is really great. The two also leaned on each other amidst everyone's cheers and congratulations, experiencing the beauty of happiness. Through unremitting efforts, Enoch finally won Nick's love. It has to be said that this is inseparable from his own efforts. His success also reflects one thing, in love. Sometimes thick-skinned routines are really useful.
And the most important thing is to be able to catch up with the person you love deeply. Alright, that's all for this video. Everyone is welcome to leave a message in the comment area. See you next time.